The Destiny franchise has been through some rough times. Its player base has seen some things. Things no other man should have to see. Vanilla Destiny, for example, could be brutal at times. The drought after Taken King felt like an eternity. But there have been a few moments in time where Destiny really was in a great place in what I consider to be the best times to play in Destiny's history. One of those times was during House of Wolves. At this point in the game with the introduction of Etheric Light, all gear from Vanilla Destiny and the Dark Below were able to be brought up to the House of Wolves power level. This meant running old content like Vault of Glass and Crota's End was viable because the great weapons from those raids could be upgraded to current level. This also meant for things like Iron Banner and Trials of Osiris, you could bring in old weapons from Vanilla and Dark Below, like your God Rolled Felwinter's Lie or something else. Taking King's Launch was another great era of Destiny. Beyond the interesting story, better mission designs, strikes, and the best raid yet, the 2.0 update changed the landscape of Destiny forever. Before the drought, Taken King offered so much that kept players busy and happy for many months. In Destiny 2, the best time to play was, without a doubt, Forsaken. Forsaken gave us so much content, most importantly, good content. Something Bungie has forgotten how to make recently. Forsaken was one of the most enjoyable times to play Destiny and during those three months, my friends and I felt like the game had returned to form and that classic Destiny magic feeling was back. But the time in Destiny's history when the state of the game was at its peak in my opinion and was nearly perfect was during Age of Triumph in Destiny 1's third year. Age of Triumph was a free update in the spring after Rise of Iron and is without question the greatest update Destiny has ever seen. Age of Triumph improved many aspects of the game and kind of screwed up one portion, but to start, let's talk about the biggest thing it did for PvE content. Updating the raids. Before Age of Triumph, gear from King's Fall and Wrath of the Machine were the only weapons and armor that could be upgraded to current power levels. With Age of Triumph, Bungie brought all four raids up to 390 light level and included all the weapons and armor from those raids. But Bungie didn't just simply increase the raid level, they tweaked some of the encounters for the Vault of Glass and basically overhauled Crota's End to be an actual proper raid. Vault of Glass and Crota's End also received their own challenge modes, similar to how King's Fall and Wrath of the Machine had their own challenge modes. In Vault of Glass, the Templar Fights challenge mode already kind of existed prior to Age of Triumph, which was preventing the Templar from teleporting, but Atheon's challenge mode was all new, requiring every person to destroy at least one oracle prior to the DPS phase. Crota's End also got some much needed attention, with the addition of new mechanics and challenges thrown in that made the raid feel much more complete and was a major improvement compared to when it launched. In addition to the improved raids, Bungie introduced something amazing to the game that definitely belongs in the current game as well, the weekly featured raid system. Each week, one of the four raids would be featured in the director with all the challenge modes active for the raid. So, for example, when Vault of Glass was the weekly featured raid, both the Templar and the Atheon challenge modes were active. When completing these challenge mode encounters, you were granted an armor ornament and an exotic primary weapon. These exotics were the same as the legendaries, but with the addition of elemental damage on them, which in Destiny 1 was a pretty big deal. Finally getting that arc damage fate bringer back in my hands after two years of not having it had never felt so good. But like I said, these rewards and challenge modes apply to all the raids, all primaries across Vault of Glass, Crota's End, King's Fall, and Wrath of the Machine all had exotic elemental versions. And let's not forget the amazing armor ornaments exclusive to these reprised raids. All four of these armor sets completely destroy anything in D2 by a mile. Every single one of these armor sets and their ornaments were stand out, and when showing it off at the tower, players looked at you like you were a god. Weekly featured raids gave you an incentive and a reason to run them thanks to amazing weapons and armor found inside. This was easily the greatest thing that came from the Age of Triumph and it's something missing from Destiny 2. Weekly featured raids introduced in a similar way for Destiny 2 would be huge for the game and could easily bring me back to being a weekly raider. But beyond the incredible reprised raids, why else was Age of Triumph the best time to play Destiny? Well, that's because just about every bit of content ever released in Destiny 1 was brought up to relevancy. Every story mission was part of a rotator for the week similar to weekly featured raids that would offer great rewards and were a pretty good challenge. Every strike in the game was available in the weekly heroic playlist 
and beyond the legendary marks, there were plenty of other reasons to run them for the chance at skeleton keys that were used to open the chests for strike-specific loot. Age of Triumph also brought Daybreak Nightfalls that were a bit different than a regular Nightfall. Daybreak Nightfalls came around once a month that included many modifiers and tougher enemies like usual, but also would drastically increase recharge times for your super and your abilities, making these Nightfalls incredibly hectic and fun while still being a challenge. Bungie also brought Challenge of the Elders back up to current levels that was always a good time to run. I personally always loved running Challenge of the Elders solo, it was very enjoyable and pretty challenging. All other parts of the game remained relevant too because all gear could be brought up to current power levels. Trials of Osiris still came every weekend, and Iron Banner every month. And can we just all agree that during year 3, Iron Banner was at its peak for the structure and reward system? Not to mention it was handled by Ephrodite at the Iron Temple which just made it all that much cooler. There was only one negative that came from Age of Triumph, and that was the change to special ammo for PvP. It left the sandbox in a pretty unhealthy place making weapons like Icebreaker, Invective, and Sidearms the only real viable options. Bungie also gave us another record book, the best one yet. These record books were very similar to the title and Triumph systems in D2, and at the time these record books were just plain awesome. Bungie introduced plenty of new quests to keep us busy on top of all of this, and ultimately Age of Triumph made for an incredible send-off to Destiny 1. And just to reiterate, Age of Triumph was free. A free update that is better than any of the paid seasonal content we've ever seen in Destiny 2. Sure, there were new Eververse items added during Age of Triumph, but this was back when Eververse didn't have such a strong stranglehold on the game's loot. It was a bit more tame back then, and because it wasn't so in your face, a lot of people didn't mind it and didn't have a problem spending any money on it. Unlike now where the bare minimum content is made just to support more Eververse sales each season. Age of Triumph made Destiny a damn near perfect game by the end of Destiny 1 and if the game had continued to build off of its foundation moving forward with D2, then I'd bet that Destiny 2 would have received a lot more love, but for whatever reason, almost every bit of progress made during D1 was thrown out the window and D2 was a bare bones experience in comparison. I still go back and play D1 all the time because to me, it still has a more satisfactory sense of progression and includes much more enjoyable gameplay loops than anything found in Destiny 2. But that's just my opinion. Age of Triumph was when the state of Destiny was at its peak and it's a shame Destiny 2 still hasn't been able to catch up to its overall quality and gameplay loops. But that's all I have for this video, thanks for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe for more Destiny content and ring that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.